I would like to thank the media for coming to our press conference and I would like in a special way to thank MTCT members for coming in your numbers. You have demonstrated that you are indeed a force to reckon with. The MDCT is a social democratic party that was founded on values of constitutionalism. It is a party that operates under the dictates of the constitution. The sad reality is that this constitution has been mutilated and shredded into pieces for times without number by those who are supposed to uphold and defend it. Article 9.1.2a enjoins the president to uphold and defend the party's constitution. It therefore follows that the president cannot be at the center of constitutional transgressions. Douglas Togarasai Monzora has for times without number violated the constitution of the party during his term as president of the party. Monzora is an illegitimate president who is a product of a rigged extraordinary congress which did not form a quorum in terms of Article 6.2.7, if an extraordinary congress does not form a quorum, an extraordinary congress must be called by the National Council within six months of the date of the incorrect congress. This means that this extraordinary congress was supposed to be held not later than 27 June 2021. Therefore, he was an illegitimate president. He is an illegitimate president who has no power to preside over any party processes. Firstly, he appointed a second deputy president in violation of Article 9.2 of the party constitution. The MTCT constitution does not have a provision for a second deputy president, and this was correctly interpreted by the Supreme Court judgment of March 2020 in the famous Marshall Universal's MTC case. Douglas Togarasa and Monzora went further and appointed the Treasurer General and the Secretary for Information and Publicity, whereas the Constitution in Article 9.1.4 only allows the President to appoint deputies to officers of Congress. He, further, he went further and added other people into the National Standing Committee, violating Article 6.4.4. This is problematic in the sense that the decisions that are taken and recommended to lower structures are questionable and are rendered null and void. The Monzora Cabal has gone on to disband legitimate party structures, a case in point being the Bulawayo Provincial Executive, and replaced it with a bogus structure, whereas Article 6.9.1.7 is very clear on what should have happened to the 2014 Bulawayo Provincial Executive. This reckless behavior calls into question the composition of the National Council because legitimate and correct 2014 National Council members have been replaced by fake Council members. This scenario applies in every other province. Article 4.3 of the Party Constitution clearly articulates that the MTC is against all forms of violence and does not believe in the use of violence as a way or means of attaining any political, social, economic, or religious objective. That does not guarantee Monzora benefited from a violent extraordinary congress which was rigged and did not form a quorum. Perpetrators of the congress violence have not yet been dealt with to date. Monzora is protecting and harboring violent people in the party. It is 13 months since the extraordinary congress and not even a single structure was dissolved from branch level to provincial level to allow, to allow for the ordinary congress to take place according to the dictates of the party's constitution. The MDCT constitution is very clear on congress timelines and processes to the extent that article 6.12.6 .6 stipulates that branch executive committee members shall be elected at a branch assembly meeting held, on, held once every five years, provided that elections are take place at least two months prior to each ward assembly meeting, held in terms of section 6.11.2. The MTC has at least five branches in each of the 1,958 wards, which translate to 9,790 branches 
countrywide. What this means is that you need at least two months to dissolve and conduct fresh elections for all the 9,790 branches countrywide. This is a process which must be conducted meticulously and thoroughly because it is those branches that we elect the word chairpersons that form a substantial part of Congress delegates, that is the 1,958 delegates. It is also important to note that the Constitution deliberately uses the word at least, which means not less than. There is no way that these branches can be held over the phone or in one day, as in Douglas Togara Simonzora's case, where he ordered that this process be conducted in one day instead of two months. This is indeed irrational. This applies to wards, districts, and provinces. And this process, which, which is supposed to be done in 10 months leading to Congress, was conducted in six days. According to a schedule released by Senator Morgan Komiji on, on 23 December 2021, branches and ward congresses were to be held on 8 and 9 January 2022. District assemblies, 15 to 16 January 2022. And provincial assemblies, 29 to 30 January, followed by nominations of standing committee members. The Congress is to be held on 5 March 2022. You then ask yourself whether this is a Congress or a meeting of a few individuals who are supposed to unconstitutionally elect the MDCT leadership. The MDCT is a serious party that is a government in waiting and must always lead by example in whatever it does. From what I have said, this is a clear indication that the Douglas Togara Simons or led cabals so Congress slated for the 5th of March is nothing but a non-event which must be dismissed as a nullity with the content it deserves. To make matters worse, Douglas Togara Simons or went to the extent of lying before a court of law. In his son affidavit filed at the Bulawayo High Court, he said, and I quote, no one was recalled or expelled at all. That is why no names were identified. This is totally false. We have never acted in any arbitrary manner at all. If second applicant Josiah Makombe was served with a letter of recall and expulsion, he needed to attach it, he did not. All this is unsubstantiated close court. As a senior lawyer, he must know better that perjury is a serious offense. It is clear that Monzora lied under oath when he claimed that he did not recall anyone. Yet in connivance with his Secretary General, Paulina Mpariwa, he had secretly written a letter to the local government minister, Honorable Putilai Moyo, to the effect that Josiah Makombe, the mayor of Gweru, had ceased to be a member of MDCT, and therefore he must be recalled as councillor for Ward 2 and subsequently replaced as mayor for Gweru. As we speak right now, Josiah Makombe has been replaced as mayor of Gweru, and his seat was gazetted by Zek as a vacant seat. As if that was not enough, he went further to mislead the courts that in the MTCT, no one can be recalled without due process, which we all know is untrue. The mayor of Berry, Josiah Makombe, was recalled without due process, and up to now, he has not received any letter advising him that he is no longer a member of MTCT, together with the offense that he is said to have committed. I now turn to the issue of the MTCT and MTC alliance. The Composite Political Cooperation Agreement was signed by the late Dr. Morgan Swangrai, MTCT, Professor Welshman Mube, MTC, Tenda EBT, PTP, Jacob Garugumbe, Transform Zimbabwe, Agripa Mtambara, Zim PF, Matthias Kuchutu, MCD, and Tenford, Musiarira, Zanindonga. And the Zimbabwe grounds, where the above mentioned principles appended their signatures. Monzora has now formed a new alliance with the likes of Lucia Matibenga of PTP, which was part of former Vice President Joyce Tourist led People's Rainbow Coalition, and Shupi Kaimandaza of MTCN, whose position is unknown among others. This is, a, this is a completely new and different pact. In addition to this, Monzora has already notified Zek that he will contest the upcoming by-elections. 
under the MTC Alliance Party. In so doing, Monzora has fired himself because in terms of the MTCT constitution, Monzora has fired himself because in terms of the MTCT constitution, Article 510A, membership of the party shall be terminated if a member joins or supports a political party other than the MTCT. Termination of membership in these circumstances is automatic. I would like to substantiate this by alluding to the fact that Monzora recalled several MPs and councillors because they were members of the Alliance and recently recalled Josiah Makombe because he was said to be a member of the Alliance and therefore he had ceased to be an empty city member. This is a clear indication that Douglas Togarase Monzora is no longer an empty city member. With all these transgressions, Douglas Tokarase Monzora cannot continue at the helm of a democratic party such as MTCT. As deputy president, I played my part in advising him in terms of my constitutional role in Article 9.2.1, which clearly states that it shall be the duty of the deputy president to assist the president in exercising his or her powers functions and administrative duties and as provided for in the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of MTCT, it is in this vein that today, the 21st day of January, the year of our Lord 2022, we who are gathered here and many others scattered around the country who could not make it to this very important event, declare an official split of the MTCT. who is also the leader. <laughs> One led by yours truly, Dr. Tobozani Kupe, who is also leader of the opposition in the National Assembly and the other. I don't know who their leader is going to be, because they've got their so-called Congress on the 5th of March. We are announcing this with a heavy heart because this is not what we wanted, but circumstances beyond our control have forced us to do this. This marriage is irreconcilable, as we have a group that is determined to violate and mutilate the party constitution every step of the way, and a group that is always guided by the dictates of the Constitution and as a leadership that always, and I repeat, that always upholds and defends the Constitution. This leadership is the one which is sitting here and the people are the ones who are sitting over there. I did my best to exercise my powers and functions that include that of upholding and defending the party's constitution and upholding and defending the party's values. But time has come to say 
this far and no further. In view of, in a few weeks to come, we are going to have a national executive and a national council to discuss the roadmap to Congress as per the constitutional timelines. I would like to conclude by emphasizing that today, the 21st of January 2022, the MDC team has two formations. And I am therefore pleading with other political players not to interfere with our internal politics as MDC team. And I'm appealing to Parliament as a legislative organ of the state to desist from taking sides as well as local government. It happened before and it must not happen again. At the same time, I am calling on the Minister of Justice to be fair and just in dealing with this matter. Like I said, we have a group which is under the Constitution and a group which respects the Constitution and operates under it in the spirit and in the letter in which it was written. Please, 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 I am begging other political players to desist from interfering in our internal affairs. Please let us be. I rest my case. Yeah.